Uh, so we are here today to talk about security analytics in open search and how the introduction of new correlation engine is gonna be a game changer in the whole threat detection mechanism. My name is Saurabh Singh. I'm part of the open search team in AWS. Hi, I am Shubho. I am also part of the open search team and primarily work in security analytics. Okay, so as part of the agenda today, we are gonna cover like three broad areas. We'll start with uh, what are the challenges enterprises usually run into when they are dealing with security analytics and threat detection. Then we'll un uncover the open source security analytics, which we launched recently. We'll talk about its features, benefits, and also use cases. Then we'll introduce you with the correlation engine finally, which is the new thing, and then how this correlation engine fits into the whole event uh, pattern recognition, and also we'll dive deep into the implementation and its use cases. So we all know security breaches do happen. Like, you know, everybody sitting in the room must have heard some stories and incidents where, you know, an adversary got into a system, and they were able to hack or maybe, you know, get access to the data they were not privileged of. So we pulled out some of the recent incidents, maybe in the last one decade, which are like pretty big. One of the major airline did confirm the data breach, which resulted in the loss of, or maybe the, you know, exposure of the data of their own customers and employees because somebody got into the system and they were able to, you know, get the unauthenticated access to the uh, databases, et cetera. Also in a similar incident, a major pipeline, uh, or I would say the oil pipeline company uh, was kind of attacked by a ransomware and a man, you know, malware, which kind of resulted in the whole shutdown of it. In another similar incident, a rideshare company also confirmed that they were, you know, attacked and, you know, by the social engineering attack, but it was, it resulted into a similar breach. Since breaches are common, uh, Let's discuss about the challenges what enterprises face through when they are trying to do these threat detection. One of the primary challenges or the biggest one is multiple security event logs, which are kind of distributed across the event, uh, I would say organizations. These logs could come from different entities, be it you know, your network devices, your servers, your application logs, it could be your uh, cloud infra logs. So it's very hard to kind of you know, analyze all of them together and analyzing them in silos doesn't give you the full picture. Also, the second problem is the data is like ever growing, it's humongously growing with time. And unless you are able to kind of get a clear picture of single pane view, it's very hard to kind of get the, you know, not get the false positives otherwise. The single view pane can, you know, can also happen with some of the tools available, but they do a lot of processing, which results into data deduplication, or I would say, you know, growth of data. And also it would result into the processing of data in the format where the original structure is lost and you kind of lose the flexibility to deal with the data, what it was originally intended for. So having looked into the challenges of, uh, of the problem of security analytics, so now let us, let us look into some of how we can actually aggregate, analyze, and correlate the security findings together in a single system. So we need to collect all these logs that are coming from different components in a single system, and which also centralizes the data visibility. And on top of that, we can run actually the detectors uh, at a fixed frequency to generate the security findings. So now in order to run these detectors, these detectors need to run on a specific set of security rules. So for in our solution, we are actually leveraging Sigma, which is an open source repository of security rules, which comes with around 2300 security rules for different log types, for example, like CloudTrail, VPC flow, S3 access log types. And also because it is an open source repo, so it also avoids the vendor lock-in and user can also come and add their own rules to it. And we incorporated those rules uh, uh, in our security analytics solution. Okay, so now we got to the you know glimpse of the challenges the enterprise faces and at a high level, what is needed to kind of do this threat detection in the right way. So if we summarize all of it, what we need is the grouping or uh, you know all the locks together so that you can analyze them. Then you need a bunch of rules which kind of have threat detection intelligence so that you can apply those rules on top of data. And then you need a rule engine which can actually do it in a performant way for you. And that's where we kind of introduce you to security analytics plugin in open search. This was launched in open search 2.5 version and over the period of time we have added a bunch of features and made incremental changes to do all of it for you out of the box. So to start with, it kind of gives you a uh, onboarding experience where you can bring in the logs. It could be your traditional logs from your, you know, uh, the, the different devices you are using in form of network, application servers, or it could be also your application log directly. If they are custom logs, you can always provide custom mapping when you are kind of onboarding, which kind of eases the whole experience about, you know, running those rules on top of the logs. 
It also comes up with a robust and performant uh, engine which kind of runs 2300 plus rules on top of the data that is coming in it gives you the centralized view to kind of look into the findings and events of interest so that you don't have to navigate you know much here and there but rather get everything in one place it kind of accelerates your overall investigation because it can pin down to exact documents or even to exact log line which is of interest and which could be you know a possible threat based on the different findings what you might see you can also configure different thresholds which are going to trigger alerts to the stakeholders in the right communication channel mechanism which you can always opt in for and let the person or you know stakeholders know of something is going on in the recent few releases we have also integrated with other tools and other security systems so that it allows uh, gives users a, compose, a comprehensive experience where it's easy for them to bring in data an example for that would be uh, amazon security data lake integration and also supporting the open cybersecurity schema format so the ocsf format is by default now supported by the security plugin which allows you to kind of ingest data from different tools directly into the open search cluster and start detection on top of it we also believe in custom tailoring because you know your data better, you know your applications better. So we always provide the mechanisms to extend the existing rules or introduce new, new log type or new custom logs uh, in, or even custom rules so that you can have a tailored version of the you know, mechanism to run detectors on top of it using the same framework. So uh, having covered the features, now look at the, some real life use cases like where it can actually come handy. So assume you have a cloud infrastructure you, uh, you have some firewall or VPC, which is kind of protecting your network traffic. Then you have an application uh, server, which is running on, let's say, some, uh, server, uh, some EC2 instance or another, any other server. For that matter, it could be a Linux machine. And then you have a bunch of uh, cloud services that you are opting for, or your application server is contacting to. It could be an S3, for example. Now, all of these different entities which are in picture are generating different logs. These logs are coming based on the transactions that are happening or whenever there's a request which is flowing through your system and it is contacting each of these entities. Now, if you need to kind of take these logs and you've channeled them together in a cluster of open search where you enable security analytics, they, it will allow you to create detectors on top of these logs, which comes with a pre-packaged 2300 plus rules, which will run on them and create findings. Now, these findings could be an event of interest, which you can kind of go look into or a security operations team can go look into and see, you know, if it is something that they need to address. Now, not all findings could be actually you know, a threat. So you can always configure thresholds, which you can define in form of a trigger conditions. So whenever those thresholds are met, you can have an alert race, and these alerts are then followed by a notification through the channels that you can opt in for, and there are a variety of mechanisms that you can opt in to kind of define those channels. Now, having said all of this, what we added recently was another component, which was going to look into the findings for you on behalf of you so that it can now find a pattern between those findings, connect them together and create uh, something which is of higher intelligence, which otherwise would have gone unnoticed. And that's where we are introducing the correlation engine. So correlation engine is actually a security findings knowledge graph that helps user to correlate the security findings across log sources and show an unified view of these findings to the end user actually. So not only it just shows the real time correlation, but it also stores this correlation in a database. So you can always go back and actually see the correlations that have happened in the past. So how do we then generate these correlations is using the correlation rules. So users can configure these correlation rules and using these rules, the correlation engine will try to see that, okay, say maybe a finding generated from the VPC flow log match with the finding generated from the Windows server log or uh, Linux server log. And that is how these correlations are actually coming up with, as you can see in the diagram. So now uh, uh, in, in the previous slide, we mentioned about, uh, uh, we mentioned about correlation based on the correlation rules. Now, if we would want to generate some automatic correlations, so, for example, uh, we would want to recommend some of the correlation uh, from security analytics perspective. So there we actually integrate with the MITRE ATT&CK Cyber Threat Intelligence Framework, uh, which actually contains a list of or a data set of common attack patterns that have been carried out by known security groups across the world. So, and these actually, these out-of-box correlations will help users to, uh, to give an insight on what is happening overall in their infrastructure. 
Okay, so as Shubo explained, so we all agree, you know, coalition is something cool and nice, it's kind of good to have, but let's see what is a real life use case of it. So we'll go back to the same example, which we are kind of used for uh, defining the use case for security analytics on its own. So let's say an adversary is trying to get into your system, they are trying to break into your VPC using some, you know, attempts and they finally get into your server, that server could be an EC2 instance or for say any other instance. And then you have some application which is running, it could be a web server, they try to make certain you know, calls to it, and eventually they are trying to also get the data which is also accessible from, let's say, the credentials available on the host, and they are trying to get the data from S3 in this example. So in all of this flow, uh, you know, because any of this threat or any of this attack would have taken certain number of steps or maybe attempts to kind of get through, each of these different entities or components would have generated different logs. Now, if you look at these different logs, which are network log, Windows log, application logs, or S3 access log, analyzing them in silos doesn't give the full picture. And you know, the SecOps team may be or may not be able to get to the whole gravity of the problem. And that's where the correlation engine comes in, where it will be able to connect these patterns given the different constructs of the scenario, and then it will be able to put a larger picture which otherwise would have gone unnoticed. And hence, your security operations team would be able to kind of get the whole gravity of the situation, what is the real attack, and maybe plan a mitigation around it. So because correlation engine, in general, is an event framework, an event correlation framework, we thought that it has a usage beyond the security scope itself. And that's where we got feedback from the community, and even, you know, we got in some internal feedback, so we thought, uh, from the users, so we thought, Let's kind of think how we can generalize it and make it available for other open search use cases as well. And that's why we thought of uh, putting this as part of a core plugin in the core itself so that now other use cases, think of it like anomaly detection or network traffic pattern analysis or user behavior analytics, if they want to kind of use this event mapping, they could go ahead and start using this plugin. So this plugin is uh, in the process of getting merged into core. We have some of the PRs out right now. Essentially, it is based on the HNSW implementation of Apache Lucene, which is using, you know, to hold or to keep persist all this relational information in form of the graph database inside the same open search cluster uh, using the Lucene library, which is anyways available. So primarily what uh, correlation is using is the dimensions of, uh, in order to, you know, to be able to correlate better. It basically starts with time as one of the primary dimensions, so which means that events happening at the same time window would, be, would, would try to be get correlated. Then you can also supply your own rules and own mappings which, which makes sense. On the right side here, we, what you see is a high level flow of how the correlation in, engine comes into picture when a document is being ingested. There's a join handler which comes into picture in the background and starts processing whenever a new ingest request comes in. It kind of looks, goes back and queries the correlation rule engine to see if there are any existing rules which apply to this particular document. If it does, then it tries to create this relational mapping and try to persist or update these vectors which are created in the graph so that now the updated information is readily available in terms of how closely or uh, in what distance a particular object is related to the previously existing existing objects. Yeah, so Sora, we already introduced the dimension of correlation. So one of the most important dimension of correlation are the correlation rules, actually. So as you can see on the right side of this uh, slide, uh, the image. So here we see that there are four indices, actually, uh, the VPC flow index, Windows index, AD LDAP logs index, and application logs index. So imagine that users are actually storing uh, the, these specific uh, system logs into these particular open search indices. And, uh, and, and then we have the query. So these queries are basically the filter queries by which events are actually selected for correlation. So once these events are selected for correlation, there are already pre-existing events uh, that are already there. So these, once this particular event is selected, we try to see that, okay, what are the pre-existing events with which this event can actually correlate? So that is, that is we use the correlation rules uh, to define, those, uh, define these correlations actually. So then once we have, once we know, okay, that uh, these events can be correlated, this new event can be correlated with, uh, with a set of events that are already ingested. So we try to convert this event into a vector. Uh, and this embedding is where we try to see, basically we know that, okay, for, for example, in this diagram, if we try to insert F4, 
uh, into into these images and let's say we, we see that f1 and f2 are already there uh, uh, already inserted into the hnsw graph then we see that okay whether f4 is ac can actually be correlated to f1 or f2 or, or not if not then we actually uh, ingest them into a layer below it uh, so that we can distinguish that okay f4 is not in the same group as f1 and f2 so that is how the insertion algorithm, a high level overview of how the insertion algorithm of correlation engine works. Similarly, uh, now that we have shown the ingestion part, now uh, we want to actually uh, search for the nearby uh, correlations of events or nearby correlation of security findings actually. So if we imagine that if we would want to find say, uh, if from this diagram, if we would want to find uh, for one particular event, say F6, if we want to find the nearby findings for this event, what we do is we actually try to construct a query vector, which is shown is in uh, red in the picture. And we try to figure out, okay, what are the nearby findings to this, uh, or what are the nearby relationship uh, to this particular query vector. And in this diagram, we see that those nearby relationships are actually F4, F5, F4, F6, and F5 and F7. So basically, then this search query that if we say that, okay, give me uh, uh, say uh, the, the, all the nearby vector and all the nearby security findings or events to one particular finding say F6, then this search query would return F4, F5 and F7. So that's uh, how the high level overview of uh, the insertion and search work in correlation engine. Okay, so I think uh, let's talk about the use cases for these uh, event correlations. So we got into the understanding of what correlation is in aspect of the security analytics plugin, what we are talking about. Now we thought that oh, it totally makes sense to have this event correlation as a generic framework available in the core plugin so that other use cases can start working upon it. So that's where we kind of you know get in, got into this direction of moving it into code. The other use case is what we envision and then what we have gotten some feedback are definitely the anomaly detection, the network traffic pattern, some of the financial fraud or the user uh, behaviors, e-commerce e customer behavior, geospatial searches, manufacturing search optimization, or maybe in the supply chain logistic optimization. So all are these avenues where the correlation or event mapping makes sense. And hence, if we have this kind of things available in the open source by default, uh, the specific use cases can be built on top of this, either in form of a plugin or in form of other tools which can sit upon Open Search Core. So here are a few references that we have captured. We have gotten tremendous support from the community in the last few months while we started this uh, whole RFC around security analytics. We got in some good feedback, requests, and issues as well. So we have been able to kind of make good, I would say, tangible progress in the space of whole security analytics as well as the correlation engine by, by itself. So these are a few links. If you are a builder, go ahead and you know submit us some issues and also maybe contribute to the codes or maybe in form of feedback, whatever you'd like to see. If you are somebody who are who want to use it for your own application, please reach out to us on public Slack and then we'll be able to kind of help you out with more uh, you know use cases or maybe even more directional uh, guidance about how where it is headed and what we are kind of looking forward to. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.